Jesus Christ. How did you get back to the beginning? Every nose is left, left, right. Right, left, left, right. Right, ship the oars, please. Just past the bridge at Molesey is our first lock. During Jerome's day, the whole of the lock would have been full of skiffs and people in boaters and, and people went with parasols, wearing gaily coloured dresses, campers. Griff, stop talking and give us a hand here. <laughs> in those days, a lock was the equivalent of a speed dating event with young show-offs out to find their perfect partner. These were the days when gay meant happy, and all the chaps looked very, very happy in their white trousers and a striped flannel blazer. The women were a veritable festival of white muslin. This is a skiff roller. And you come up in your boat and you stick it on there and then you haul it bodily straight up these rollers. And it's as easy as doing that. Except that in order to do that, you have to unload the boat. Perhaps somewhere else, Rory couldn't be bothered. Excuse, it is. excuse me, my friend here was wondering whether your boat was named after the Italian referee. Pierre Luigi Colina. No? All no. oh, right, you didn't buy it off a sort of strange looking bald Italian with bulging no. eyes. No. It's always embarrassing to listen to Rory with his red face and huge pot belly chatting up girls along the way. Well, I mean, it's an embarrassment for the girls, and it's amusing for the rest of it. Skiffs like ours were very much the poor man's watercraft. Any old riff-raff like us could rent them at most waterside towns. The wealthy were more likely to be seen aboard a steam launch, the equivalent of today's cabin cruiser, while the stinking rich would entertain on their own houseboat. Some of these were less like boats and more like floating palaces, a place to sip your gin and watch the plebs go by. Oh, can you hear music? Can you go more slowly, please? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, look. This is David Gilmore's boat. You mean this is David Gilmore's recording studio? Yeah. Sorry, who's David Gilmore? David Gilmore, you know, Pink Floyd. Ah, uh, no. Who's David? Who can find him? You'd have thought, though, with his money, he could have his hi-fi built in, you know, in nice cameras. <laughs> I suspect this is actually something Ooh. completely illegal that we're doing. Oh! We've just m moored up at someone's house. Very no mooring, no trespassing. Yeah, this is probably going to... Well, he knows us. Yeah, I we've know, met but... before. But, I mean, how happy, happy is he going to be? How happy we... is he going to be that we just turn up and descend on him? He's in the middle of working. Hey, you He's wife, probably busy you know, working on something. Yeah. Come on in. we we'll have. This is amazing. God, that's astonishing. Look at this. Well... It's a giant tape recorder. Massive that tape recorder. Tell me, what have we interrupted you doing this morning? I'm, I, I'm in the middle of making a, a gramophone record. A gramophone record? They're yes. coming back, are they? Yeah. <laughs> Would it be cheeky to ask if we'd have a little sneak preview? If that's you can, you can play preview. something. And we'll give you our opinion. How about that? This is a... It's in 3-4 time. It is. Well done. And it's, um... Quiet and acoustic -y. They're not all like this one. But... Lovely. Real rowing on the real music. It is, actually. Yeah, it is. To make it all right sleep has taken me I'm out of sight. I think we like that, don't we? Oh, we yeah, do. Right. Can I ask you a question? Who, yeah. who is the woman singing on that? Um, that's me. <laughs> oh. Beautiful. You can't take him anywhere, not even on a barge on the Thames. <laughs> I've spent half my life in airless recording studios, with no windows, no light, and we get here and it's beautiful. And so what's the history of it? Well, it was built by Fred Carno in 1910, 1912, something like that, and, and his instruction was that he wanted the best houseboat on the river, and there were a lot of houseboats on the river in those days. He built it to be on that island right there, Tags Island, where he had a hotel, right. Carcino, hmm. which is a cunning mix of the word Carno and Casino, and this was a massive sort of London meeting place. Fred Carno, he was the sort of... He was a Chris musical or... impresario yeah. type character who discovered Stan Laurel and Charlie Chaplin and all these people. 
he kept his best guys, or what he considered to be his best guys here, and sent the others off to the States to be in his touring company over there, and um, they all got discovered and pinched. So do you want to look around Let's the rest of it? Yes, definitely, yeah. And then you can get back to the very nice song, that. Very nice. Yes, indeed. very, very good. To see that lavatory. Yeah, but you can see this one. This, this is a very nice, it's a very nice bathroom, this yes. one. Yes, We have made most of two Pink Floyd records in this tiny oh, really? room. Really? Can yes, I be the everyone, first? Everyone in here playing the first stick, to play a chord. There's two little rooms out there yeah. um, which we stick guitar amps and things in so that we can... Um, Bro, you, you can't be playing the guitar in the background while they're doing that. Fucks up the head. Mind your head. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be me. Oh, yes! This was designed with... Um, he, he wanted to be able to have a 90-piece orchestra on here. Man, he lived his life at a quite a pitch, didn't he, Frank? <laughs> was this inspirational, this? I think we should write a song about our trip, don't you think? Yeah, I think we should probably have some more adventures first, though, shouldn't we? Yes. Yeah, I think this this first part of the, this first day, you know, and then we met Dave Gilmore. That was it. That'd be the first line. See, of the Dave, day. I, yeah. David, I pulled my comedy face then when you yeah. said that. Well, luckily the camera missed it. <laughs> Go on. You're do going it. to write a song about the trip. Yeah. All yeah. oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Don't tell him it's not worth yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nice him to let us in, relatively unknown. <laughs> yeah, very good of him. When's the CD coming out? Uh, March, I think. You're going to buy it then. Yeah, I quite like it, actually. It's quite nice. Are you rowing or not? I'm just actually trying to work out where we are. We're almost at Magna Carta Island. Is that for them they did on the first day? On the day? first day, they, they became too Magna. tired. Too tired, they were, well, we're to go this far on the first day. Are we no, I'm very no, frank, actually. It's just frightening. I read you from the book. Will I read yeah, you from the book? Yeah, yeah read from I the book. I first read you from the book. We went over to Magna Carta Island and had a look at the stone which stands in the cottage there and on which the Great Charter is said to have been signed. Though as to whether it really was signed there, as some say, on the other bank of Runnymede, over there, I am declined to commit myself. OK. He wouldn't, uh. he wouldn't say. The house is still there, the stone is still there, and as a bit of a treat, right. we're going to stop there oh. for the night. Are they expecting us to arrive? They're, they're sort of expecting us to arrive right. at this stage, yes. <laughs> nice old place. Who are we meeting? Vera Cooper, she's called. Right. Hello, nice car. That is a nice yes. car. In fact, is that a Jaguar? What? What is it? Mm. It's a Maserati. Casey's at the number. There we go. Hello. Hello there. Hello. This is Cooper. Welcome ashore. Yeah, thank, thank you very, you very much. much indeed. Indeed. Hello. I'm Rory, very nice to meet you. And you? I know you all from somewhere. Probably <laughs> seen us on Crime Watch. <laughs> Oh, is that what it is? You want to see the stone? Indeed, Can we? let's please. This is the actual stone. Yes. It was supposed to have been uh, fished up out of the river. Mm. It was... Um... So I'm looking underneath. I'm not looking to find out if it's <laughs> fake. I'm just looking yeah. to find out how big this stone it's is. Quite, it's it? quite it's thick, it's quite heavy. Thing, I've right. never been... Never mm. anybody has been able to get it up. Oh, really? Yet. Right. Well, we'll yeah. give you 20 quid for it, Sorry? Mrs Cooper. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. King John yeah. was supposed to have been brought to Runnymede right. and from thence by boat to the island yes. where he was made to set the seal on the charter. Yeah, I mean, that's an old, no, funny yeah, yeah, old yeah. print up there yeah. of him yeah. signing it. I imagine it was a bit like and that, maybe. Okay. I think yeah. the idea was this yeah. is no man's land yes. and they got the barons on right. the one side and the troops on the other and um, they got him to seal it here mm. within a ring of walnut trees, right. which yeah. we have in the garden. Mm -hmm. well, presumably yeah. have the same walnut trees. The last one fell down about two years ago. And the forestry people had told me it was about 800 years old. Wow. wow. Mm. And what um, what do you use this room for now? We use you it as a bar, actually. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Quite an interesting thought, really, that we'll be staying on the island where the basis of all of our modern legal systems was born. Well, I say staying. What we're actually doing is camping in the garden which is probably just like all those Knights of King John many, many years ago, except that I would wager that they had a few serfs around to help set up the camp. Just give me a handle. You're not good. Uh, you, OK, well, you just push the bone away. OK. OK, here, I'll, I'll drag you in close. <laughs> is that all we need from there? Um, this is the tent. That's the tent. Four, three. Four. Yeah, Sleeping bag. 
Hey, this is 